Welcome to Roslyn Hill Chapel Online. My name is Reverend Kate Dean and I am proud to serve as the minister for this Unitarian spiritual community here in Hampstead, North London. We call it a spiritual home for open minds. And we wish you a happy Easter today. After the dark times, the darkest times in the Easter story, we now step into the light, the springtime and the time for rebirth. Today on Easter Sunday, we join with many congregations throughout the country and the world at this time to mark a major celebration in the Christian calendar as we honour our Christian heritage. It marks a time when, having been tortured and killed by the authorities, a great leader and teacher called Jesus appeared to have risen from the dead. After speaking to his close friends and disciples, the Bible tells us that he ascended into heaven to be with God, whom he called Abba, or Father. Today, what we can experience through this timeless tale is the weight of loss and the possibility of renewal. It is a time for transformation of all kinds. And so we light our chalice flame, the symbol of our liberal religious faith. May this flame be as the light of knowledge in our minds and the warmth of love in our hearts. And as usual, we have our candles of joys and concerns here, and I'm going to light a few and invite you to think of the joys and concerns that you are holding in your hearts this day. And again, I light our candle of hope so that we may hold hope in our hearts for ourselves, our loved ones, and anyone who is suffering through these challenging times. At this point, we often greet our neighbours if we are here together in the chapel. And so today I'd like us to think about welcoming the spring, welcoming this time of rebirth and renewal. And so perhaps if you're out and about on your walk, you might like to greet a tree um, or greet a flower. Um, thank the tree for the oxygen that it is bringing to us. So let's greet our uh, neighbours in, in nature today. And now let us sing our first hymn.
Our Time for All Ages is something a little different today. We have an animation. It has been created by Harry, Bruce and their friends. They are the sons of Emily Jackson, a former member of this chapel, and they now live in Australia. It is an Easter story uh, from the New Testament, The Road to Emmaus. The Road to Emmaus! Two people were walking to the village of Emmaus. They were discussing all that had happened. A stranger joined them and asked them what they were talking about. You must be the only stranger in Jerusalem that has not heard. They kept walking and told him about everything. He said he believed them because it was written in the scriptures. They asked him to have a meal of them, and so he did. Five minutes later. The stranger broke and blessed the bread. Suddenly they realised that the stranger was Jesus. And like that, he disappeared. They rushed back to Jerusalem to tell everyone. Usually we would pass round the collection plate and divide our donations between the upkeep of this beautiful chapel and our chosen good cause for this month. We don't have that opportunity as we aren't gathered together, but we do now have a virtual collection plate and so I invite you to make a donation through our Just Giving page. You can also donate by contacting our administrator for our bank details or by increasing your standing order if you are a registered chapel member. We thank you for all the ways that you contribute to our congregation and our chapel life through your time, your talent and your treasure. Thank you. Our first reading is a reimagining of Psalm 139 by Carla Groschmiller. The mystery of your being, so intimate, so strange, a silken veil obscuring vision, a compelling luminescence that will not be solved. You are the light and the veil. You are the weaver and the cloth. You are the dancer and the dance. There is nowhere where you are not. There is nothing not in you. All of time and space cohere in you. The smallest particle, the largest galaxy, the might and the mammoth bear your imprint. From before conception, you order our being. We are wonder, a miracle in flesh and blood, bodies that bruise and heal, minds that grasp and grow, hands that care, craft and create. We reach our limits, and there we find you. We contract to the still centre, there you are. Blessed are those who seek you, and blessed are those who sense you. Blessed are those who, catching the light from the corner of their eyes, turn and face you. Blessed are the barefoot, and blessed are those that cover their heads. Our second reading 
is by the Unitarian Universalist Sarah York. It's called Rolling Away the Stone. In the tomb of the soul, we carry secret yearnings, pains, frustration, loneliness, fears, regrets, worries. In the tomb of the soul, we take refuge from the world and its heaviness. In the tomb of the soul, we wrap ourselves in the security of darkness. Sometimes this is a comfort. Sometimes it is an escape. Sometimes it prepares us for experience. Sometimes it insulates us from life. Sometimes this tomb life gives us time to feel the pain of the world and reach out to heal others. Sometimes it numbs us and locks us up with our own concerns. In this season, where light and dark balance the day, we seek balance for ourselves. Grateful for the darkness that has nourished us, we push away the stone and invite the light to awaken us to the possibilities within us and among us. Possibilities for new life in ourselves and in the world. Let us pray an Easter prayer by Paul Sawyer, followed by a period of silent meditation. Loving God, we gather together in humility, awed by the stone rolled back and the surprise of the empty tomb. We gather in defiance of the pain and the injustice that came before and of the pain and injustice that will likely come again. We gather in hope that life can begin anew, that our differences can be bridged, that the beloved community can rise at last. We gather in faith that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. We gather in wonder of the beauty we can see and of the mystery of all we can never know. Here, amid the lilies, amid the warm glow of friends and family come home, we pray for faith and strength to stand for what is good, to do what we must, to live lives of integrity and peace. We pray in gratitude and joy for this community, for the beauty of this day, for the hope and love promised in this ancient story, in the stone rolled away.
All around us, life is dying and life is being born, writes Howard Thurman. Mulching leaves and new shoots, it is a season of loss and renewal. This is the season for change and transition. As new buds appear, spring cleaning begins as we start to think about putting away our winter clothes. In quite a different sort of garden, 2,000 years ago, so the Gospels tell us, a miraculous change of another kind took place, which turned the hearts of the believers from sorrow and loss into hope and joy. The empty tomb can be a symbol of all of those losses in our lives. Sarah York expresses this connection in her poem. She writes, in the tomb of the soul, we carry secret yearnings, pain, frustration, loneliness, fears, regrets, worries. In the earliest of the Gospels, Mark, the Easter story ends abruptly with two women waiting in an empty tomb. When they are told to go to Galilee, not knowing what they would find. It ends at the beginning of a journey for them. Over the following decades and centuries, other Gospels were created, other interpretations of the Easter story. Divine inspiration, perhaps, led early Christians to explore the different possibilities for what happened next. And these possibilities continue to ignite the imagination of millions today. In the tomb of the soul, we take refuge from the world and its heaviness. In the tomb of the soul, we wrap ourselves in the security of darkness. Sometimes this is a comfort, sometimes it is an escape. Our Jewish friends began their Passover festival on time to remember a story of liberation. The plagues sent to Egypt and the miraculous parting of the Red Sea as Moses led the Israelites to freedom. So choose your miracle, the one that resonates with you. The miracle of the stone rolled away, revealing an empty tomb. The miracle of a dead man appearing to his loved ones. The miracle of the liberation of the Israelites, honoured during Passover. The miracle of rebirth, snowdrops in spring, the buds on the trees and leaves that gleam in the weak spring sunshine. These can all be miracles. So choose your miracle, your method of transformation, something, something to believe in, because especially in these toughest of times, we all need something or someone to believe in. Whether this is what we call our religion or our bonds of friendship or our favorite football team or the love of our families. Sometimes this tomb life gives us time to feel the pain of the world and reach out to heal others, writes Sarah York. Grateful for the darkness that has nourished us, we push away the stone and invite the light to awaken us to the possibilities within us and among us. Possibilities for new life in ourselves and in our world. In beloved community, we share stories of loss and renewal, concerns we have about ourselves and our families, and ways we hope to support them. In this time of enforced isolation, we are doing this via WhatsApp groups and Zoom meetings. When we lose someone or something, we join in the sorrows of those who have gone before us, and when we are able to find hope, however small, among the sorrows of loss, it is a pathway that leads us to renewal and transformation. Megan McKenna, the Catholic writer, talks about resurrection in these terms, that by helping people to come back from the edge of life, 
This is a kind of resurrection. It happens every time you bring hope into a situation, she says. Every time you bring joy that shatters despair. Every time you forgive others and help them to recover their dignity. Each time we are able to notice the spiritual radiance in people, we can find ways to nurture and strengthen it. Small encouragements, gentle words, may it be all that's needed to open a wounded heart, like a tender shoot, spring shoot appearing anew. Spring also feels like the time to dust off the walking boots and dust off those abandoned New Year's resolutions, remember them. Making the most of the lengthening days is part of the pleasure of turning the wheel of the seasons, if only to do our one hour of government-sanctioned daily exercise. Those parts of ourselves which we have taken for granted in winter hibernation can be renewed once more. As Carla Groschmiller's psalm proclaims, we are a wonder, a miracle in flesh and blood. Bodies that bruise and heal, minds that grasp and grow, hands that care, craft and create. All around us, worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. All around us, life is dying and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree. The roots are silently at work in the darkness of the earth. Against a time when there will against a time when there shall be new leaves, fresh blossoms, green fruit, such is the growing edge. The words of Howard Thurman as he reflects on the growing edge in our lives, the one more thing to try when all else has failed. It can feel like that sometimes. And for many of us, although I recognize not all of us, this is part of our spiritual journey, led forward along the growing edge to further transformation by some, some unseen presence. Many Unitarians continue to believe in some sort of divinity, a life force, or the power of love and that its connection to all living things lives through the spirit. In the days of Dr. Martineau in the 1800s, they probably would have still called this the Holy Spirit, which worked not only through Jesus, but through all living things. Could it be that this sense of oneness is what is calling us forward to renew ourselves in this season of renewal? We do ourselves a disservice if we abandon what gems we might find in the Bible because of what we can find difficult to accept. We can be inspired by these we can be inspired by these words in Romans. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We Unitarians are free from dogma or specific creeds, free to believe and act as our conscience dictates. Whether we believe that Jesus rose from the dead, whether we believe he ascended to heaven, whether we believe it is a metaphor for a universal truth, the Easter story has resonated with millions of people for thousands of years. It is the idea that we all have the potential to be something, someone different, and perhaps a little better than we are today. We cannot turn our eyes away from great suffering. It continues in the world, but we can play a small part through renewal and change in our lives finding ways to meet loss and suffering and return with our hearts intact. This is not easy work. It is the work of the soul. 
We can't hope to get it right all of the time. But the more we try, the more hope we bring into this world. The teachings of Jesus brought hope into the world and caused an inner transformation in many human hearts. As the academic Paul Winter wrote in his book, The Trial of Jesus, sentence was passed and Jesus was led away, crucified, dead and buried. He yet rose in the hearts of his disciples who had loved him and felt he was near. Tried by the world, condemned by authority, buried by the churches that professed his name, he is rising again, today and tomorrow, in the hearts of men and women who love him and feel he is near. And so I end with the words of Howard Thurman, The Growing Edge. All around us, Worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. All around us life is dying and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree, the roots are silently at work in the darkness of the earth. Against a time when there shall be new leaves, new blossoms, green fruit, such is the growing edge. It is the extra breath from the exhausted lung. The one more thing to try when all else has failed. The upward reach of life when weariness closes in upon all endeavour. This is the basis of hope in moments of despair. The incentive to carry on when times are out of joint and people have lost their reason. The source of confidence when worlds crash and dreams whiten into ash. The birth of a child, life's most dramatic answer to death. This is the growing edge incarnate. Look well to the growing edge. Blessed be. And now let us sing our final hymn.
spirit of life and love. May we find transformation in the Easter story to renew our lives and spread joy and happiness throughout the world. Blessed be. Amen.